I'm excited to be here today. If you, uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Ryan Jordan. I'm the Brandon Campus Pastor, and uh, I haven't been here um, in like nine months. And uh, uh, if you're new to the church, we, about uh, two years ago, coming up on two years, we launched a second campus in Brandon. And um, I've known Jason for about 15 years, and he called me, and he talked me into coming down, and here I am. And so today, we're swapping. Um, so Jason is out there with the Brandon campus, and I, uh, you're stuck with me today. And so, but I wanted to give you a little update on Brandon, because really, Brandon exists really because of, of the people that sit in this auditorium. Because of you trusting in a vision and getting behind a vision with prayers and finances um, and hard work. And that is why we exist out there because of the sacrifice that you've given. And I actually want to show you a couple pictures of what is going on right now as we speak. And so this is um, our first growth track that graduated a couple months ago out in Brandon. And these are just awesome people that just have jumped right into team access. And uh, we've got a couple other things. This is a, uh, an outreach we did with the YMCA collection. Collecting um, colored pencils and packed 1,400 backpacks for kids in the area. It was uh, it was awesome. It was so it was so cool to be a part. And then this is kind of what's going on. I know it's a little dark, but that's what we look like right now today. Um, and I got some excited news, exciting news to share. Come the end of September, we're going to be moving out of this room and we're going to be moving into a big gym because God is just bringing more people to the campus and we're seeing more lives change. That's right. And so I, I like to brag about the campus, and I like to brag about you because really we exist because of you, because of your sacrifice and your giving and your prayers and your thoughts. And for some of you, you drive out once in a while to help us out running something. And so thank you so much. Before we jump into the message, I got a couple more things that I wanted to kind of hit up. So if you'd be patient with me for a second. Um, a few months ago, we did a series on honor. And I kind of, um, I, I love what God has done in our church over the last few months with, with in, uh Developing a culture of honor within access, within our, within our staff, within our groups, within our people. And this past week, um, I saw it firsthand, and I wanted to um, honor you, Access. Uh, this past week, the Braddock family lost um, their daughter, and, and when we went to the memorial service, it was just littered with Access people, and I loved it because we represented, and that's truly what a biblical functioning community looks like. We come together as a family, and we lift each other up, and we pray for each other, and we just show up, and we may not say a word, but we know that we're there strong, and so I want to honor you for showing up and be a part, and that's truly what you you miss if you don't get involved with a group. And we got a fall semester coming up. It's going to be awesome. And that's why it's important to jump in with a small group because you find out what's going on. You do things as a family. And then, and then God just comes in and does some miraculous things. And so I want to honor you. And the second thing, um, you know, Pastor Jason, when he comes over to Brandon, he usually... He usually finds an embarrassing picture or a story and talks about me and shares. And usually I just have to sit there and take it. And I thought about coming out the gates with something funny and just really, really harass him. But I actually kind of want to do the opposite. Um, I've known Jason for 15 years. And uh, when he called me to come down here, there's no person on this planet that was more confident that knew what they were doing in terms of launching campuses and launching a church and pastoring. And we got a good one. We really do. He, he, he's not a nine to five guy. He's not a guy that just, he's doing this because he has nothing else better to do. You have a pastor that thinks about you day and night, that prays for you, that um, has great vision for your life and, and for the lives that you have uh, contact with the people that are around you. And I want to honor Pastor Jason and Liz for their sacrifice, for their pastoring. He's not only a friend, he's my pastor, and, uh, and I love him. And so he may see this on video, he may not, it doesn't matter, but can we just give him a hand clap? Can we just tell him we love him? If you haven't had a chance to connect with him, call him up, email him, tell him that, that you want him to take him to a steak dinner on him. He'll do it, I promise you, and go and have one on, on him. It's going to be great. Well, let's pray, and then we're going to jump right into uh, Christianese. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you that we can come together and we can celebrate. We can celebrate you. We can sing songs that celebrate you. We can talk about what you've done in each one of our lives. And then we can come, we can, we can crack open your word and, and we can dive in and we can allow the word to come and speak to us and change us and mold us and ultimately help us to become more like Christ. And that's our, that's our prayer today, God, that we would leave here more, uh, more like you, looking more like your image today. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. This past year, um, 
my youngest daughter, as I mentioned during back to school prayer, went to what's called VPK, which is like pre preschool. Um, and she went to a Christian school in Brandon. And I, I found myself at some weird events. Um, if, if you've been a, a believer for a long time, you, at times you'll go to an event where there's all Christians, and weird stuff just happens sometimes. In this event, it was a chapel service, and we are, um, at the beginning, the, uh, the administrator comes up and says, will you stand? Um, we're going to do a couple things. We do this every week when we start our chapel services. And so, um, just like in schools, they put their hand on their heart, and they did pledge allegiance to the flag, and the kids are yelling, and they're looking around, and they're just having a blast, and I'm watching my, my uh, uh, at then four-year-old daughter um, just have a fun, you know, smile on her face. Then they did a pledge to the Christian flag. And I don't know if you've ever seen that there's actually a pledge to an actual Christian flag. And they do the same thing. They put their hand on their heart. I pledge to the Christian flag. And they go through the same thing and they repeat it and they repeat it. And then the headmaster got up and she read through a prayer um, that was, it was, you could tell she was just reading what was on the paper. And at the end, as if she coached the kids, they all yelled at the same time, in Jesus' name, Amen. And they laughed and they had a seat and I was like, this is, this is, this is kind of weird. If, if, with me being a Christian, I get it. But if I'm there and I have no idea anything about Christ, I'm thinking that this is like a weird cult that, that my daughter's and my kid is in and I need to get them out of here. And in, in the Christian world, in our world, many times we can easily become polarizing by the language that we speak. By, by the terms that we use. And that's what this whole series is about. It's unpacking some of these statements that we can easily use um, that to us make sense. For some of us, it makes sense. And for some of us, j just like what we're going to learn today in Jesus' name, it's a statement that we've heard before, we've been told to speak, but maybe we, we, we don't really understand where it came from or why Jesus made that statement. And so we can come and we can hear statements like glory or I plead the blood or a hedge of protect, protection, which never made sense to me because a hedge is only about this big and I can jump over that. So let's come up with something better. How about a wall of protection? Uh, or even just a simple uh, word of amen in a service. And, and we don't discourage uh, saying amen. In fact, if you ever want to mess with Jason one Sunday, just yell amen real loud in the message. It, it, it'll, just, it'll just derail him. It'll be a lot of fun. And so that, that, that's, my, that's my get back at him. There you go. Just say amen next time he's here next week. It'll be great. And so um, we, we, we use this language that at times can polarize or, or divide us from uh, the, the lost, the world that need to know why we say what we say. When I was young, I grew up in a, in a Catholic home, and I went to a Catholic school um, for a couple years. And I can remember many things through this Catholic school. I remember, uh, I remember getting in trouble, and the nuns, you know, smacking my hand with a ruler. I remember hating that nun. I remember um, going to different things, and one, um, one service we went to, some of the parents were there, and I remember standing next to um, my... Uh, my friend's parents, and there was a lot of people in this, and I don't even know, really know what it was, but there was probably about the same size we have here in this mass service. And I remember standing there, and it really creeped me out, this service, because I'm standing there, and I'm seeing this, this old dude in, in a robe say these prayers and, and have this weird dialogue with the crowd that the crowd would actually respond with, with statements, um, like, and also with you, and they would repeat things. And as I'm watching this, we go through the, the service, and then at some point, everybody stands up and goes down and drinks out of the same cup, which freaks me out all, all by itself, and eats, the, you know, we all, they take these massive wafers, and they do the Eucharist communion. And, and, then, and then I went back to my seat, and I looked over, and I noticed that there was a blind man. I'm just painting you a picture of what this experience was. I'm just, it's, it's, it's liberating getting this out. Over here, there's a blind guy reading a Braille Bible. And I'm, and I'm just fascinated by this guy just reading, going to town. Um, and, and then all of a sudden, I'm standing up there, and, and my friend's dad, um, as the, the, the priest um, um, repeats a lot of things in, in, the, in, the, in the world of, of church, we call that liturgy, repeating um, and saying these prayers, he leans down to me and just says, humana, 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 humana. So I got the humana guy over here, I got the blind guy, and I got the priest repeating these things. And it was just as a young kid, you're like, creeped out, like, get me out of here. Um, I don't understand. And then, and then at the end of it, he says, in Jesus' name. But he doesn't say it. He kind of sings it. Monotone, in Jesus' name, amen. 
And it was one of those stories, one of those moments that I probably will remember forever because it was, it was one of the first experiences I had to like liturgy or um, Christian uh, rhetoric, like repeating things. And many times uh, we do the same thing and we don't even know it. I don't know if, if you've ever been taught or you've ever just naturally heard somebody do this, but you say a prayer, Lord bless me, Lord do this, and then you make a statement at the end, in Jesus' name, Amen. And we say it so, so, so easily, it comes off the tongue so quickly that we don't even realize what we're saying. It's like, it's like the icing on the cake. It's like how you, 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 you end a prayer with, in Jesus' name, amen. And I remember as a kid thinking, if I didn't say that, my prayer wouldn't be answered. I remember being taught to say, in Jesus' name, at a young age in children's church. And it's just what you do. And I think sometimes we say it so much that it loses uh, the power. And maybe even, maybe even you're here and you've never really discovered why we say in Jesus' name. So I want to jump into scripture. I want to find out why we do this, why we say this. So grab your worship guide, grab your Bible. We're going to go to the book of John this morning. We're going to go to the book of John and really kind of jump in to this. And let me kind of just paint the scene here, give you some context. Um, the book of John is one of four gospels. Gospel means the stories of Christ. It's, it's, the, it's our account of what Jesus did um, uh, here, or what we know of that he did here. And John, about 80 to 90 percent of it, documents the last eight to nine days of Jesus' life. And so it gives us the last closing chapter of what Jesus did on this planet before uh, he was crucified. And so the book of John here, in, these, in, in, in chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16, it's kind of the closing of, it's the Lord's Supper, um, Jesus washing the feet of, uh, of the disciples, instituting the Lord's Supper, um, which we do here, here and there. Um, it is, it is Judas leaving that dinner, selling Jesus um, to ultimately uh, be crucified, to be judged in a corrupt Roman court and be crucified on the cross um, for you and for me. And so this happens, and then right before Jesus goes to the Garden of Olives to pray and weep and be sold into that process of crucifixion, there's a gap there where we have about three chapters that give us some of the most amazing things that Jesus ever said. He, he, he introduces the Holy Spirit here as the person that will come when he leaves. He talks about us being the vine and, and, and him being the branches and how we're connected. And he also says, he references six times here, this statement in Jesus Name. And so if you go there in your notes, it's there. Um, John 14, 12. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. It's very important there that you, you underline or circle greater. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And, and then I'm going to cherry pick one other verse that's not in your notes, but I wanted to add in there is John 16, 24. It says, until now you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your jar, joy will be complete. So, so in these last few months of, of, of their lives together, uh, the disciples who are uh, the good Jewish boys, you know, they, they, they grew up knowing the prayers, studied the Torah, did their best. They didn't quite make um, rabbinical school. They didn't quite make it to the, to, the, to, the, to the upper class of education. And Jesus comes along, finds them, and takes them and says, I'm going to train you to be fishers of men. And he, they follow them. And slowly at some point through there, they, one of them makes a statement, Jesus, we notice you're praying different than we are. How should we pray? And then he goes through and talks about the Lord's Prayer, which we all know. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And... Um, and so they start praying this, which uh, if you ever recite the Lord's Prayer like that, it's, it, I, it, there's more to it than just that. Uh, it's like if you just kind of recite it like that, it's kind of like drinking concentrate. Like the Lord's Prayer is a paradigm. It's a, it's a plan for prayer. And so they come and they think they have it down because they know the Lord's Prayer. They know how to pray. And all of a sudden Jesus, in the last few moments of his life, uh, throws of them a curveball. And if you've ever been around somebody in the last few moments of life and they've had this urgency to share the last nuggets that they can um, about life and about the future and about w whatever's on their heart, um, 
It's very important to listen to those statements. And Jesus, in his last few moments, gathers the, guy, the guys that are close to him that mean the most, and he says, he says these statements, until now you have not asked anything in my name, and you receive your joy, and it will be complete. That you can ask in his name. And there's some strong implications there. That A, a they've, never, they've never prayed this way. They've never prayed this way. And B, if he says it six times, it's got to be significant. In fact, I want to extract three things out of that John 14 verse there. In your notes, there's there's three blanks there. And the first thing is is redirection. Is redirection. If you notice in that verse, it says at the end, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. And many times in these last few chapters before Jesus leaves and and, and is crucified, he redirects everything to the Father. Everything he bounces off and redirects to the Father. And so he's coming to you saying, "You you can pray things in my name, but what you're really doing is you're redirecting. You're bouncing it off to me because the Father will hear you because of what I'm about to do for you. That you cannot find a relationship with God by yourself. That it, there has to be um, something that comes in and creates a bridge, creates a way for you to enter in right relationship with God. And that's Jesus Christ that we know of. And so it's amazing that through all these verses, and if you read through, everything is a redirection to the Father. Everything is a redirection to bring the Father glory. To show off our Father And and we say this statement in Jesus' name, and I I wonder if that is ever on our mind when we're saying these statements. Lord, bless me. Bless this food. Uh, God is eat. Let's eat. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. We say these quick, 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 quick statements, and sometimes I feel like we forget the power of what we are saying. And and ultimately, when when we say these statements, we're redirecting. We're redirecting the Lord to who God is. Number two there is appropriation. Appropriation. Praying in Jesus' name uh, is, is, is really, if you look at that word, in Jesus' name, uh, that word in is a preposition that, that it, it's set before a noun or a pronoun, and it sets up the, the relationship between that word, the noun, and, and what is going on in that statement. And so prayer in Jesus' name, if you read that word in and you, and you research it, it really means within or through. So, so we can read this as faith, face value, pray this in Jesus' name, or we can dig and realize that when we're saying these statements, we're praying these things through Jesus' name. Like, understand that. When, when you pray for healing, when, when you pray for reconciliation with one of your children, when, when you pray that God would help you in some emotional baggage, when you say that statement at the end, it's not a closure, it's not a magic word, it's not the secret code. You're praying through the name of Jesus. He says, you have not done this up until this point. You've not utilized me and prayed through the power that I have. When you say those words in Jesus' name, it's as if you're funneling those things through uh, the, the, the power of Jesus Christ himself. It, there's more to it. There's, there's a very powerful, unique look on this when you, when you read into that and realize that as you pray that, it's as if you're praying it through his heart, his heartbeat, and his will for your life. And the third thing that I wanted to extract out of this um, is authority. Authority. And really, right next to it, in Jesus' name. Authority in Jesus' name. I don't know if you've ever been to a setting um, or you've been to like, let's say, a, a concert or an event or a venue, and somebody says to you, hey, just when you get up to the gate, tell them that John said you can go through. I don't know if you've ever been to an event where they say, hey, when you get up to, to, to this organization, tell them to call uh, Stephanie and, 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 and they'll, they'll let you through. In, in a sense, Jesus is saying, use my name on your behalf. Utilize my name and the power that comes with that name, the authority that comes with that name. Use that to see miracles happen. Like if I said the name Grady Judd, 
there's some weight in that, especially in this county. <laughs> I can get a lot of free stuff probably if I went and said, hey, Grady Judd sent me. I need to get in here. You know, if I, if I say the name Barack Obama, images come to your mind. There's weight in that name. Even if I say Jason Burns, something comes to your mind, there's, there's weight. And I've tried to go to events and say Jason sent me, and they're like, get out of here. We don't know who Jason is. <laughs> I don't understand. There's, there's, there's authority. There's character. There's, there's a position that comes with somebody's name. It's a, it's a means of identification, and it's a, a, an office that you walk in. And Jesus says here, hey, use my name. Use my name when you approach the throne of God. I know you. We have a relationship. So when you approach the throne, when the redirection happens, use my name. Ride my coattails. Allow the same power that I have, that I've used, allow that same power to take you into the supernatural realm and see God do mighty and great exploits. We just read it. To do greater things than I have. I mean, when I read Jesus' story, I see some crazy stuff. I mean, he took mud and wiped it on people's eyes, and they saw. He raised people from the dead. Jesus is saying that I can do more than that. And so it's a redirection. It's an authority of what Jesus has for you. We say this, these statements in Jesus' name um, all the time. In fact, Jesus takes it even a step further in your notes there. Matthew 18, 20 for where two or more or two or three are gathered in my name, there, there I am with them. And in, in the Christian world, many times we think, oh, the more people, the more Jesus. It's not really the case. In the context, when, when, the, when the disciples um, would go from town to town, sometimes there'd be two, sometimes there'd be four, sometimes there'd be 10, sometimes there'd be 100. And he's saying, hey, if there's two or 100, I'm still there. I'm still there. That, that, that when you gather, I'm there. When you gather in my name, it's quite possible for us to gather in Jesus' name. Do you know the opposite is true? It's quite possible for us to gather not in Jesus' name. It's quite possible for you to serve. Probably over 100 uh, team access between the two campuses serve today. It's quite possible for you to serve in Jesus' name. It's quite possible for you to give in Jesus' name. It's quite possible for you to not give in Jesus' name. It becomes a habit. It's what you do every, every time you get a paycheck. You write the 10% and you go. And there's no life in that. Jesus says, do this in my name and watch what happens. Watch the life that comes into your life when you start doing things in the name, through the name of Jesus Christ. Gather Sundays. Could, could, could you just imagine for me just a second? What would happen access if we drove here every morning with an anticipation of what God is going to do? What would happen if you drove to the job that you hate, the job that you wish you could quit, and you drove and you started praying through Jesus' name for, for him to open up doors? What would happen if we come here, when, 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 when Jordan and Kristen start worship, if there's an anticipation for God to do something new? I don't think any one, any one of us wants to gather on a Sunday morning expecting what was going to happen last Sunday and just kind of do the thing, check it off. Like Sunday morning should be the most exciting moment of your week. Yeah. It really should be because we gather together corporately to experience something new from God. Not a time where Jason's going to uh, uh, wow your intellect or tickle your heart. Not a time where you hope that the band does the song that you like the right way. Come on, we've all been there, right? <laughs> just the right song goes you're like this is my jam and the next song you're like this is not my jam <laughs> what, would have there, what would happen Axis, if we gathered together through Jesus name expecting God to do great and mighty exploits where Sunday mornings become the biggest thing that happens in our week where our kids can go, and Aaron is just going to kill it with some, with some uh, kids. Maybe I shouldn't use the word kill it. He's going to do a great job with our kids' ministry. <laughs> we'll edit that out. What happened if our kids come after service, which they do, and like, Mom, that was the best thing I've ever done. Like, can we come back next week? Can, I can't wait to come back. My kids do that on Sundays how it is. But sometimes when you, when you have pastor's kids, you just think that you kind of just pay them. They have to say those things. 
as we gather in his name, I believe things, things will happen. I believe things that will happen that are not normal, not in the natural, but in the supernatural. I, I want to kind of share the last chunk of, of, this, of this talk. Not, not necessarily bring a correction, but, but, but more speaking to um, what could be a false doctrine that has found its way into the body of Christ. And I remember when I was um, growing up, I heard about this. And then when I got into college, I, I really saw this. I went to um, Southeast University, um, my alma mater, which is, that's my plug. You should go. Doesn't matter how old you are, go to Southeastern. It's awesome. Um, but I remember uh, meeting somebody, and I went to his apartment. And when I walked into his kitchen, he had huge pictures of Cadillacs taped to his walls. And I thought, either this guy really likes cars, or I just walked into a weird house. And so, as I was talking to him, he said, yeah, I put them up there because I, I, I named those, those Cadillacs and I claim those and God's going to give me a Cadillac. And I thought, okay, whatever. If that works, throw my name in there. And he started to explain to me this doctrine of name it and claim it, of like speaking things out into existence that we have the power to say physical words and hocus pocus, God will bring those to us. And it is a, an exaggerated uh, doctrine of what, of what God really wants to do with the heartbeat of that. If you remember, um, if you've been around for a year or so, we did a series uh, called Fresh Air. And in this series, we unpacked the spirit of God and who he is. Um, and in Genesis, he talks about um, uh, coming to this world, that the spirit of God was there at the very beginning, and he blew across the, the planet. And one day, he, 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 blew, he blew out and spoke out the, the, the stars and the skies and, and the gap between the sky and, and, and land and, and birds and, and, and fish and and animals, and so on, and he said those were good, and he, and, he, and he said more, and he said those were good, and, and if you research that word spirit there, it means a breath of fresh air, uh, 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 words of life, and, and, and it's that word there um, uh, that, that the New Testament calls it pneuma, it's the same word that talks about the Holy Spirit breathing out his spirit, speaking out, and there is something, there is something so true about speaking life out of our mouth, there is. And so I want you to not throw the baby out with the bathwater on this. I don't believe that we can speak a Cadillac into existence. I don't. But I believe that I can speak words of life over my kids and they'll start to believe those things. I believe that in your time of crisis, we can come to each other in our groups, and when somebody's down or somebody's going through something, we can speak life to them. We can come with the word of God, and we can physically speak out life that changes and transforms their heart. I, I believe that at times we can even speak the word uh, of Jesus over somebody, over something, and just by simply saying that word, it, it, it's, the, it's the beginning of life, transitioning as we speak out the relationship that we have with Jesus and he redirects it to what the Father has for us. And because Jesus knows us, the Father knows us by our first name. And we have that relationship. So, so when today, as, you, as you're faced with things, this week as you're faced with things, speak things out. Share, share things with God and pray through Jesus' name, through his will, what he has for you. Let, let me also say this. If saying in Jesus' name is a habit and a formula and it's just what you say, then stop saying it. Stop saying it. Pray and extract that until you get the revelation of what it really means to pray through Jesus' name. This is a tool Sunday. This is a, a Sunday that we give you certain tools to help live the life that God has called you to live. And I believe as you do speak things out, life starts to happen. Change starts to take place. Not in the extreme of, of trying to win the lottery next weekend. But as you as you say, God, I, I, this, isn't a, 
This is a circumstance that I no longer can fix. I don't have the strength, the logic, the power. So Jesus, in your name, I give it to you. I'm going to allow you to push this thing through in your timing and your will. You see, some of you may be sitting here and you think, well, that's fine, but I've tried that and it doesn't work. I've tried it in Jesus' name, and how come it doesn't work sometimes? And my, my comeback would be, it's not your job to decide what he's going to do and not do. We're obedient by bringing things to, to the Father through his Son and letting God's work, timing, circumstances come to fruition through his ability to know what's best for his kids. My kids ask me for a ton of stuff. If, if, if my son Jack III, if he got everything he wanted, he'd have, uh, he'd have uh, cars everywhere. He'd have le- he, my house would, would be made out of Legos. But I know that that's not the best thing for him right now in this season and in this life. I have to believe the same thing happens with our relationship with God. He knows what's best. He knows what's the right time. And he ultimately, he knows when to give it to us that we can reflect, we can, we can redirect and give glory back to him. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Giving glory back to him through the relationship we have and Jesus Christ. These statements, the, these, these Christianese that we throw in there, there is some that are just ridiculous that you just laugh about, but then there are some, like this one, that are so, so important. That, that, that are deal breakers, that are that important. And when you get this, it will change your life. Maybe you've, maybe you've walked in here and somebody invited you and this whole thing is new. Like you're, you're saying, I don't even understand what you're saying. I don't understand half of this. But what I, what I do know is that something's kind of stirring inside of me this morning. Can I tell you that, that, that God loves you and in his attempts to get the attention of all humanity, he came up with the very best thing he could do and that is giving his son over to this world to be crucified for our sins. Out of everything he could have done, he could have called down legions. He could have just destroyed this world. But, it, but out of everything, he said, I'm going to get their attention by giving them the closest thing to my heart, and that is my son. And maybe you've walked in here and you've never committed your heart to Jesus Christ. And I would love to have the privilege and the honor to, to pray with you this morning before you, you leave here and go to lunch that you know that you're in right standing with Jesus Christ. And here at Access, we believe that that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he loves us and that God is in heaven and he's not writing down these, every single thing that you do as like some judge. He's looking down with his arms wide open because he loves you. He does. And the Bible says, uh, as Jason shared last week, of, he uses a very simple, simple term that if you uh, uh, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, then you are Saved. Saved simple words, simple language, saved from eternity, separate from him. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Maybe you've come here today. Maybe somebody invited you. Can I I just tell you it's not an accident that you walked into this campus today. It's not, it's not a coincidence that you're here, that there's a, there's a savior that loves you so much and wants to give you that new life and if you've never prayed and and invited Christ to come into your heart live in your life and forgive you of the past the the present and and, and take you into the future then I want to be the first and before we close and you hear and you say that's that's me Ryan I need to I need to make sure I I know where I'm at with God when I leave this place with nobody's head uh, uh, but everybody just really taking this personal time with, with, with God. Would, if you want to make that prayer with me and say that prayer with me, would you just slip your hand up right where you're at? You can put it right down once you say that. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? That's awesome. I see that hand. That's awesome. Anybody else? You ready to make this decision today? Today is going to be a day. You're going to leave here knowing that the love of the Father has filled your heart and blown fresh air into your lungs of life. One last time, anybody else? Just lift your hand up and you can put it right back down. Lord, we thank you. We, we thank you that, God, you, out of everything, you truly did send the very best thing for us, your son. And, and in this moment of this service, I, I, we pray together 
and we ask you to forgive us and for us that lifted our hands or maybe even didn't we know that you're real and we know that you're alive and we give you our hearts we give you our lives we give you we give you the junk of the past and we pray that your grace would would be sufficient that it would it would come in and it would wash over us and we ask for your forgiveness and we give you our past present and more importantly we give you our future so Jesus come into our hearts Allow us to, to, to lift the weight of guilt off as we walk in your forgiveness, Jesus Christ. We honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, look, we do this every week, and you're going to need to get used to it because we're going to do it every week because we're, what happens when somebody gives their heart to Jesus is there's like a party that throws down in heaven. When I think of a party... It's about to go down, like fun, like music loud, cranking, like, so can we just, can we just give them a hand clap if you raise your hand? That's awesome. Woo! Yeah. Yeah.